Honey, are you going to be late again tonight? Yeah? So what? So what? You're never home on time. Our little Ryan misses you so much. He needs his father in his life. Oh, please. You're the mom. You deal with him. It's not my job to raise him. How can you be so heartless? Ryan is your son, too. Do you even care about him at all? You're always so nice to your nephews, but you treat Ryan like dirt. Poor Ryan. He deserves a better father than you. Hey, watch your mouth. Ryan is lucky to have both his parents alive and well. Unlike my sister's kids, they lost their dad in the divorce. She's struggling to raise them by herself, and you never help her out. Wow, you're such a saint. Always looking out for your sister. I bet you wish you married her instead of me. You're always saying, my mom this, or my sister that. You're such a mama's boy. Do you have a crush on your sister or something? Don't be ridiculous. And don't be so bitter. You knew what you signed up for when you married me. Remember our wedding vows? I told you to give my mom $500 every month as allowance. She's an old lady who lives alone with no income. But you never gave her a cent. So don't complain when I send her money. That's your duty, not mine. Are you serious? First you want me to feel sorry for your mom, and now you want me to pay her $500 every month? Why should I do that? When I asked you to do the same for my parents, you ignored me. You didn't even acknowledge them. Ugh, I hate you. I wish I never married you. If only Ryan wasn't born, I could have left you long ago. Your mom is nothing like my mom. How dare you compare them? You should be grateful to be part of this family. You owe everything to me and my mom. Why should I care about your parents? Oh, sure. Whatever you say, Mr. Mama's boy. Why don't you go back to your mom and sister? They're the only ones who love you. I'm taking Ryan to Six Flags. He's been begging me to go on the Batman ride. He loves DC Comics. You wouldn't know that, of course. You don't know anything about your son. Six Flags? That sounds fun. My nephews are bored at home. You should take them with you. What the hell? Are you out of your mind? Don't you dare suggest that. I'm doing this for Ryan, not for them. He's been so depressed lately, and you're never there for him. What's the big deal? It would be nice for Ryan to bond with his cousins. Nice? He hates your nephews. He's been having nightmares about them stealing you away from him. That kid is too soft. He needs to toughen up. He won't survive in the real world. I need to have a talk with him. Don't you dare? Stay away from my son. If you try to talk to him, I'll slap you. Just keep your mouth shut. Got it? Danner, darling, look at this. Hector got me a foot massager for my birthday. He's such a sweet son. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. Don't you think so, dear? Sure, Patricia. That's wonderful. You're so lucky to have a son who loves you so much and works so hard. I am, honey. Oh, and guess what? Hector is coming over later to see his nephews. He hasn't seen them in three days. They miss him like crazy. They can't stop talking about him. We're going to have a nice family dinner. I'm making Hector's favorite, lasagna and mac and cheese. You should join us too. Oh, and bring Ryan along. I haven't seen him in forever. He's practically a stranger to me. How long has it been since I last saw him? A year, maybe? I bet he's grown a lot. Well, actually, Hector hasn't been home in four months. Since January. He missed the holidays, too. He said he would watch Frozen with us on Christmas. Ryan was so excited. He even dressed up as Olaf to surprise him. But Hector never showed up. You should have seen Ryan's face. He was crushed. 
He always asks for his dad, but he's never there. Ryan cries himself to sleep every night. He wants his father so badly. It breaks my heart. Breaks your heart? Don't be so dramatic. He has a father who makes a lot of money from his successful business. And he has a mother who spoils him and takes care of him. He has everything he could ever want. He's better off than most kids his age. Patricia. Hector spends way too much time with his nephews. He sees them every day almost. Ryan hasn't seen his dad in ages. Hector needs to come home. Dana, you don't know how hard it is to raise a child, especially a boy. My daughter and I have to do it all by ourselves. We don't have a man around to help us. Hector is just being a good uncle and a good brother. He's been a godsend. We really couldn't do it without him. Patricia, I'm sorry, but Ryan and I are not coming over today. You can have your dinner with Hector and the boys. I hope you have a great time. Ryan and I are going to the mall. I'm buying him some new jeans and a robot dog toy. He's been wanting one for so long. You know, things that a father should buy for his son. But in our house, the father is useless. Poor Ryan. He is a father who doesn't care about him at all. What the hell, woman? What's with the attitude? Why are you so bitter? So cold. You have no sympathy at all. Have a look at this. When was the last time we got our family photo taken? Oh, right. Never. Your son is the only one in his entire grade who doesn't have a picture with his own family. And now look at him. He's envying all of his friends that do. I told you I'm going to send you the money for rent. I'm not talking about the rent right now. Are you really that tense? What's your IQ? Like 50? Do you not feel anything after reading that conversation? Are there no light bulbs that go off in your head? You, sir, had better get your butt home tomorrow. Got it? Tomorrow? I can't. My oldest nephew is receiving an award tomorrow. He came in first place for the school-wide mug drawing contest. The ceremony is expected to end pretty late and we'll all be heading out to dinner at Bennigan's afterwards. Oh, is that so, Hector Mond? Should I just leave poor Ryan all alone, envying other kids' family photos? Do you want his classmates to mock him for having such a deprived family? For having a father who was absent from his life? Fine. What time do you want me there by? To hell with the time. You better run over here as soon as you get off work. For the past seven years, how many times have you celebrated Ryan's birthday? Too few to count. Make sure you do it right this time, to make up for all the years you've neglected our child. My sister is going to be so upset. She's going to kill me. Rather than thinking about your sister, I wish you'd think about how upset your son would be. Okay, okay, I got it. Honey, what's Ryan doing next weekend? Do you have any plans for him? Why are you suddenly asking me about his plans? He doesn't have any as far as I know. Why do you ask? Is there something you want to tell me? Well, my mom wants to take the grandkids on a road trip to the Grand Canyon. She said it's been a while since we had a family outing together. She thinks it would be good for us to bond and have some fun. Let's bring Ryan along too. He deserves a break from school and homework. Oh, yeah, of course. That sounds like a nice idea. Ryan would love to see the Grand Canyon. He's always been fascinated by nature and geography. Great, then it's settled. It costs $200 per person for the trip. Send me the money through Venmo by Thursday, okay? My mom needs to book the hotel and the car rental in advance. Wait a minute. Hector... Get your priorities straight. Rent first. Trip second? You still owe me $300 for this month's rent. 
You only paid for half of it last time, remember? Give me the rest of the money and then figure out the travel expenses on your own. I thought you said you had deep pockets. Where else are you going to spend all that cash? You've got to be kidding me, Dana. You know I'm broke right now. I already spent most of my savings on gifts for my mom, Carrie and her two boys. Mom needed a new Gucci bag for her high school reunion next weekend. She said the strap on the Prada one broke about a month and a half ago. She couldn't go to the reunion without a decent bag. Carrie's dishwasher stopped working so I had to buy her a new one from Bosch. She said she couldn't handle washing the dishes by hand every day. And my nephews begged me to get them new Sony PSPs. They said their classmates were bullying them for not owning one. They said they felt left out and lonely. So now I barely have any money left. Not even enough to buy a beer. That's your problem, Hector. You have to figure that out yourself. You can't expect me to bail you out every time. As for the trip, ugh, I'll see what I can do. I have an appointment with the hairdressers next week, but I'll call them to postpone it. Maybe I can save some money by skipping the salon? But remember, Hector, I'm only agreeing to accompany you based on one condition. Don't you dare neglect your duties as a father to Ryan while we're there. I won't let things slide this time. If you push your luck one more time, mark my words, all hell will break loose. Dana, why are you being so difficult? Why are you accusing me of being a poor father? I'm only trying to help out my sister and her boys since she's having a tough time juggling two jobs and a family. She needs my support and assistance. Besides, my nephews haven't seen their dad since the divorce. He ran off with some young blonde and never looked back. And since I'm the only adult male they know, I try to support them as a father figure. I try to give them some love and guidance. Hector, we've been through this so many times before. Don't you see how much you're hurting Ryan? He's your son, Hector. You're flesh and blood. He needs you more than anyone else. He needs you to be a father to him. Not to someone else's kids. Ugh. Ryan is mourning for a father who isn't even dead. You're alive and well, and yet you've never been there for our son. Why are you doing this to him? Why are you making him yearn for you? That boy is way too sensitive. Why does he act like a crybaby all the time? He needs to man up a bit. Carrie has two boys too. Why aren't you telling them to man up? Forget it. I've had enough of this conversation. I'll take care of the travel expenses. Just make sure you have nothing else planned for next week. Dana, this is urgent. Do you have extra cash on you? I need it right now. Of course not. Why do you ask? What's going on? You don't have any left. What happened to the money I gave you last week? I thought you had some savings. That's what I saved up for Ryan's future. His college tuition and future wedding. I'm not going to squander it needlessly on your whims. I promise to reimburse you. Just give me the money. It's for a good cause. What? Why all of a sudden? What do you need the money for? It looks like my nephews won't be able to attend college. They can't afford to pay for next semester. They applied for scholarships and loans, but they were rejected. Everyone has an undergraduate degree these days. It would be a shame for them not to. They have so much potential. Why are you asking me for the money? It's not a substantial amount anyway. It barely covers a fraction of Ryan's tuition. Why don't you ask your mom or your sister? They're the ones who should be responsible for your nephews. Oh, come on, Dana. You know they don't have any money either. My mom is retired and living on a pension. My sister is struggling to make ends meet with her two jobs. They need my help and I need yours. Hector, don't even think about touching that money. Not even in your wildest dreams. I'm warning you, that money is for our son, not your sister's kids. You have no right to take it away from him. He's worked hard to get into a good college. 
He deserves a better future than you. Don't you dare ruin it for him! You dirtbag thief! Who the hell do you think you are? How did you get a hold of my checkbook? I kept it in my safe for extra protection. I thought it was secure from your grady hands. Easy. <laughs> I figure out the combination. It's Ryan's birthday, right? You always use that as your password for everything. That's why you should have given it to me when I asked nicely. It would have saved us both a lot of trouble. I can't believe I was scammed by you, of all people. You're supposed to be my husband, not my enemy. How could you do this to me? How could you do this to our son? My nephews have to pay for classes next semester. They're in a tight spot right now. They need the money urgently. I'll reimburse you later, I promise. I'll find a way to make it up to you. When? In this lifetime? Don't make me laugh, Hector. You never keep your promises. You always break them and disappoint me. For the love of God, how many times do I have to tell you? For the upteenth time, I said I'll pay you back. I'm not a liar. I'm just trying to help my family. I should have never married you or even met you. It's my fault for putting up with all your shenanigans for all these years. Hector Mond, you are the most irresponsible human being I've ever seen. Truly despicable. You have no sense of morality or decency. Anyway, while we're on this topic, what the hell is going on with Ryan? He's been so rude to me lately. He ignores me whenever I come home and treats me like I'm invisible. He doesn't even say hello or goodbye. He doesn't answer my calls or texts. Go teach your son some manners, woman. He needs to respect his father. Keep your voice down. You're only getting what you deserve. You reap what you sow, Hector. You can't expect Ryan to love you or respect you when you don't show him any love or respect for yourself. What? Are you saying that I deserve this? Are you saying that I'm a bad father? Think about it. What did you do for your son when he was younger? You didn't show him any love or affection like other dads do. You never hugged him or kissed him or told him that you loved him. You never showed up to his elementary school or middle school graduation. You completely forgot about his school band concerts. Every single one of them. He practiced so hard for them. He wanted you to be there, but you weren't. You were too busy with your work or your sister or your nephews. You always had an excuse. If you keep asking him about school or life, obviously Ryan's not going to like it. He'd think that you're being disingenuous. Like, why are you giving him attention now, after all these years? Why do you care now when you didn't care before? If you don't want to make me uncomfortable, I suggest you keep your mouth shut. Our son is in high school now. He is no longer a child. He is a young man. He doesn't need you anymore. What did I do wrong? I raised him with my hard-earned salary. I worked overtime most nights to support our family. Even when my business was struggling to stay afloat, I sacrificed my weekends for work just to put food on the table. And this is how you two repay me? This is what I get in return. A cold shoulder and a slap in the face. But isn't that every parent's obligation anyway? You only gave our son the bare minimum. You never gave him anything extra. You never took him anywhere and celebrated his birthdays or holidays with him. And it was only until he turned seven that we got our family photo taken. Yet, you have the nerve to ask what you did wrong. You should be asking what you did right. That jerk is acting that way because you keep screwing up. You didn't discipline him properly. You spoiled him rotten. You let him do whatever he wanted. You never set any boundaries or rules for him. Jerk? What about those jerk nephews of yours? Watch it, Dana. Don't call them that. They're not jerks. They're good kids. Why the double standard, Hector? Why are you so riled up? What kind of father calls his own son a jerk 
while defending someone else's children. Oh, for God's sake. You don't understand anything, Dana. You don't understand me and my family. I admit, I wasn't the greatest fan of your nephews all the time. But at least I treated them with gifts from time to time. Remember the Nike sneakers? I got them and the tie-dye t-shirts. I bought them at the same time. I went shopping for our son's clothes right before Ryan entered fifth grade. But what have you done? Every day, your only focus is on Patricia, Carrie, and the boys. That's all you talk about. While Ryan and I are pushed to the back burner every single time. Don't expect our son to behave friendly towards you. You don't deserve that kind of respect. I see where he gets his temperament from. Like mother, like son. You two are like long lost twins. You're both stubborn and selfish and ungrateful. And about the funds that you stole from my account? Make sure you pay me back within two years. That's Ryan's college tuition for crying out loud. That's his ticket to a better life. Don't you dare ruin it for him. I know already. Quit your hollering, woman. You're giving me a headache. When on earth are you going to pay me back? Ryan's tuition is coming up soon, and I only have a week left. Listen, I don't have a single dime. Do you think I'd refuse to hand it to you if I had the money? I clearly told you to pay me back within two years. And that was two years ago. Why the hell did you take the money without my permission in the first place? I told you before, my nephews needed to go to college. Why are you sacrificing my son in order to send your nephews to college? Send Ryan to college? What's the point of sending that rascal to school? He's got such an awful character. If he doesn't shape up, that boy won't have much of a future ahead of him. I have a better idea. Instead of university, why don't you just tell Ryan to get the gig at Home Depot after graduation? It'll suit him better. Are you seriously wishing that on your own son? Like, for real? The way I see it, he's hopeless. A good for nothing. Do you know what Ryan's dream is? To become a doctor. That's why he's studied so hard, pulling all-nighters all throughout high school. He's at the top of his class, never gotten below an A-. minus. Never missed honor roll. A perfect score on the SATs. All of his teachers call him an academic genius. Every single one of them. But now you're telling my ambitious, high-achieving son to work at Home Depot? The college is useless for him? What about your nephews, huh? Why are you bothering to send them to college? Neither of them did well academically. The only reason they got into Delaware is because of their football scholarships. You can't compare apples to oranges. As you said, Ryan is good at school. He'll be fine on his own without my help. But for Carrie's sons, it's different. They need bachelor's degrees in order to find decent jobs. Amazing. Bravo. You blew up your entire life savings to support your sister's family. And now you can't even send your son to college because you can't afford it. Let Ryan work part-time to cover his own tuition. He needs to learn to be self-sufficient anyway. Nowadays, I hear that kids can pay for college after working part-time for only a year. Oh, I've had enough of you. I can't live with you anymore. Let's separate. I really need time on my own to reevaluate my life decisions. Oh, stop overreacting. Are you busy, honey? Do you have a minute to talk to me? Did you forget what I told you two years ago? Should I call the police? I told you not to contact me. I told you to leave me alone. I told you to stay away from me and our son. No, I mean, is Ryan doing okay? How is he coping with college? Is he happy? Is he healthy? Why are you asking about Ryan all of a sudden? You never cared about him before. It's just that he's our son. He's paying his way through college while working part-time. 
he has two tutoring jobs on campus, and he's waiting tables at a nearby restaurant. He's studying hard and getting good grades. He's making friends and having fun. He's doing great. And he doesn't need you. That sounds great. Dana, sweetheart, I think we should all live together again. I think we should give our marriage another chance. Ha! <laughs> what kind of nonsense are you spewing? Hector, have you been drinking again? Have you lost your mind? Have you forgotten what you did to us? Let me move back in with you. I have nothing left. Ah, uh, life is so hard. I have no job, no money, no friends. Go complain to your lovely nephews about your situation. Are you trying to mooch off of us? Don't even mention those ingrates. They have no gratitude for all the sacrifices I've made for them. When I pointed out their bad behavior, they retorted. Who do you think you are? Do you really think you can replace our father? Had I known how rotten they were, I would have never helped them. I would have never wasted my time and money on them. I would have never neglected you and Ryan for them. <laughs> Serves you right. After 10 years, I can finally get my revenge. Get lost, you piece of trash. Don't ever call me again. I hope you live the rest of your life as a lonely, bitter old man. After being abandoned by the very nephews he once adored, my husband was coldly rejected by our son after attempting to reconnect with him. He had hoped to find some solace and forgiveness in Ryan, but he was met with nothing but contempt and hatred. Rumors say that he is now living a harsh, bitter life all on his own. It seems that his mother, sister, and nephews all abandoned him because he's old and penniless. They no longer need him or want him. They have moved on with their lives without him. Such an ironic and cruel twist of fate. It reminds me of the saying, What goes around, comes around. He had treated us so poorly, and now he's paying the price. Even now, Ryan shivers in anger at the mere mention of his father. He can't forget or forgive the years of neglect and betrayal. He can't stand the sight or sound of him. Needless to say, my son still adamantly refuses to see Hector. He doesn't consider him as his father anymore. He considers him as a stranger. That's why my son and I have decided to live happily together. Just the two of us. We have each other, and that's enough. We don't need Hector in our lives. We don't want him in our lives. We're better off without him.